Parts are in. Time to work on the IG-18 again. Hi, oh, evening YouTube. Here with you on this Friday evening. I got my parts in for the uh, heat kit IG-18 and have them installed. Here's one, two, three, four capacitors in the power supply section. And uh, we can see those real clearly there. And on the other side, we see one here, one here, and one here that's been replaced. So there's uh, seven all together, it looks like. And uh, that should take care of the electrolytic capacitors in this. Uh, I'm going to try it one more time and see what kind of uh, signal I get. Uh, see if that made any difference at all. And if it didn't, then well, I'll have to start looking at the wiring, I guess. Uh, the reason I didn't go after the wiring first is because, you know, somebody put this together and it's, it's been obviously well used. And I got to figure, surely somebody would have noticed before now if it was wired wrong, <laughs> you know. So I don't know, that's just my thoughts on that. Uh, everybody might disagree with me, that's okay. Uh, so anyway, that's... <laughs> That's what I'm looking at, and uh, let's uh, hook it up and see what we got. Alright, back with you once more on a Saturday this time, YouTube. It is uh, 1.31 in the afternoon, and um, I have the, uh, I don't know what you call it, the, uh, it's kind of like NPR playing on the radio so that I don't get copyright, and um, I have this which uh, seems to have worked pretty good. I uh, I used it to drill out the uh, control that I was going to, but this was just too big. And that didn't work as planned, so let me show you what I came up with. Now you can see there, what I did was take the uh, um, brass ring. Now these brass rings are just riveted in there, and they don't they're not soldered directly to the uh, switch contact. They're just riveted to basically to hold the uh, switch contact in. So what I did was uh, uh, sand off the uh, rivet and sand it off around the, uh, the contact there and made contact between the two so that now I can go ahead and put that uh, wire in that hole and it's just the same as being on the uh, contact. Oops. <laughs> anyway. I got the lower and lower. Like I said, I can go ahead and use this hole here now to uh, put my wires in, and it should work just fine because there is an electrical connection between the two. And when, when I do solder that, I'll make sure I solder all that and make a good contact around all that. So that's how I fixed it. The uh, hole did go through on the first. There's actually two two parts of that. I don't know if you can see it, but there's uh, this is the top part here. And underneath it is the other part that comes along and, and touches this um, wafer that goes around. And uh, it kind of goes, they go between the two. So um, that's why I had to get it through both of them. And I did through the one and, uh, and it kept twisting on me. And then I couldn't get it through the second one without messing up the first one. So. Anyway, that's what that turned out. Let me let me check with Bob. I know he's just dying on, or just uh, having a fit over there about something. So I'll be right back with you. All right, back with you once more. I uh, now this was the other experiment I made. Uh, you remember the camera that I'm using right now? I had that screwed in, and uh, was trying to get a, a mold made of the uh, threads, but it didn't quite work out. Most of it came off when I went to unscrew it. And I'm back to the same old thing. If I touch this camera at all, it, uh, oh. like I said, that's, uh, that's not working. So I, I gotta figure out something to, to do that. It seems like now this, the screw, it works fine with that screw. It, it gets real tight on that screw. I think maybe the, uh, uh, tripod or the camera boom, uh, uh, the screw is not the same exact size, it must be a smaller, slightly smaller one. But anyway, so that's, that's those two problems. The next thing I've got to show you is this right here. And uh, what I've done here is, well, along with the uh, help of my 
good friend Bob Gibbons and <clears throat> he and I kind of went over this this morning and uh, went back to the uh, basics uh, the test and adjustment section of the manual and basically started doing that um, which uh, actually got some progress made I think let me show you what I got let me plug it in here um, and I'll set up the scope so you can see that all right there's that let me turn it on you can see the uh, meter now there's uh, still a problem with this and I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute but uh, let's see where's my probe I'm going to try to use both cameras here now um, this other one's going to be the uh, one on the uh, on the uh, scope Hi, now you can see the uh, trace on the uh, scope. That's a pretty nice sine wave. And uh, I have that hooked to the output of the sine wave output. Let me show you that. The scope is on X1. And I can adjust the uh, frequency in that and we'll do that next. Let me show you. Alright, going up in frequency. So that all, all seems to work. Uh, there's the 10 times. Now, I know that you notice how that moving around like that? That's me touching the control. Those controls are very dirty. So that's going to be priority on my list of things to do for this. <coughs> and uh, Let me show you what square wave uh, it looks like. So let me hook that up. Hang on. All right, there you can see the square wave. And again, that uh, that should be adjustable in frequency as well. Well, scope's going to have a fit, but other than that, it does seem to be working. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. See, it's this it's this control here. It just doesn't have the. Uh, it's just too dirty. So there you go. It's working fine. The only, only problem with it now is, like I said, dirty controls. And uh, in order to get that, like I said, we had to just see. Uh, he and I both com composited the, the thinking that uh, the previous owner said that he couldn't get it to work right, and he did a lot of the adjustments on it, probably. And as such, he probably messed it up more than he fixed it. <laughs> like I said, this is the... Uh, uh, seems to be working now. Uh, now there's a little bit of a problem with this. <coughs> Excuse me. The meter, like I said, there's still some fine adjustments. The uh, let me show you this over here. If I can do this without messing up too bad. This control here, a free feedback control. I don't know if you can see that. I think you can. It's very very touchy so I may go ahead and just buy some new pots for those and uh, change those out because uh, like I said it's so touchy it's just you can you know you have to set that to to get the the voltage the meter right and things like that I do have it close now it's on nine volts now let's see no I'm at three I can't tell that's to supposed to be 10 volts there when a police officer accused him of and arrested him for that's the fine control you saying the officer made it up so that gets like i say that can be adjusted with that feedback control and i'll show you what i'm talking about let's uh keep keep an eye on the meter while i try to touch up oh i've got the wrong screwdriver no wonder there you go there's the other one got to use the uh, plastic or I do anyway so now that should be right on 10 and it was in these cramped quarters that the bad cop and the wrongfully accused had no choice there you go see it's a little touchy but it did get uh, right on 10 so 
the uh, it does drift a little bit also you can see it's coming a bit down now a little bit so that's uh, one of the problems with it I, I don't know exactly which one of the uh, things are call, causing the drift but uh, anyway that's what we got to do is try to fix that part but at least we have the sine wave now working fine and uh, that's a big big step for me anyway um, I'm just happy that we've got that far so anyway I'm gonna kind of close this out and I think that's gonna be, be doing it little, 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 be doing it for me today um, anyway um, like I said I have the uh, control fixed up now enough to where it can be used and I may get back on that this evening I don't know and I'll probably uh, record it some of it anyway I'm not doing another uh, another step-by-step -step thing that that just takes up way too much time so uh, it's too hard to do it's just uh, you see me do it you, you see you see what I'm doing so that's all you really need uh, I want to get that thing done and I, I'd like to get started on the VTVM because I'm hoping that's going to come out really good because uh, I need a good VTVM on my bench so I can get rid of those other two uh, the field effect meter and the uh, other heat kit and maybe get this uh, get this uh, set up to where I'll have a decent halfway decent bench so all right that's going to do it you know I've got I'm just thinking about this I know you guys can't see what I'm looking at but where the clock's sitting if I put that uh, handle down, I could probably put that BTVM right on top of the fluke. That would be nice. I never thought about that. That would give me uh, my meters in the same spot. That would be kind of neat. I'm thinking, I'll have to think about that. But like I said, that's, uh, that's going to do me for now. You guys have a great afternoon, great day. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you. Thank you.